So, waggler fishing, Andrew. Best is worth fishing ever in the old wide world ever, Jamie. We're liking it, innit? We're going it's in depth, but amazing. it's a sort of spur the moment, not a spur the moment thing, it's current thinking thing for me. Yeah. We've, we've yeah, covered yeah. lots of ways of waggler fishing before. We've not, we've done a one at Old Duff fishing an insert waggler on bottom, very yeah. similar to where we are today on Arena. Yeah. On the bottom, when it's a bit harder. But at the minute, I've just spent two matches at the Glebe, three matches at the Glebe have just been, and a few other venues as well that are very similar. Mm. And the waggler against features has been a massive thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mostly off deck. Yeah. And not, it's not your standard fishing on bottom, and it's not your standard pellet waggler approach. You know what I mean? Where you're, you're getting fish within your feed. It, it, there's so many different things that need to be thought about. Yeah. Rather than the elements that it's, you need to think about with pellet waggler fishing. I want to say it is very technical. It does take a lot of getting used to. I've not done massive in it. Lots of this style of pellet waggler fishing, folks, and it's like it's eye-opening with how how much detail you need to put into it and need to think about. Like for example, we're chucking to a night, so you've got to clip up. That's the main one. It's getting used to. Obviously, when you're clipping up with like a feeder or a ledger bomb, yeah, it's you're feeling easy, the weight it? of it. Where with this, obviously, it's so light. If you're hitting it too hard then it's going to be like maximised at that end. It's going to like bounce right back at you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like... It's, There's it's, a lot of variables yeah. that can make this nasty and it's unreal the little differences they make between getting a bite and not getting a bite, don't 100%, they? 100%, mate. And that, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I want to focus on with this one. Going a bit technical with you lot with, yeah, waggler fishing. And hence the reason features. why Jamie's doing it and not me because it's technical. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? But yeah, that's what I'm going. And I want to talk about the Glebe as well because that's definitely the venue that I had these noisy geese do me heading yesterday geese. as well. That's really surprising, the Glebe, that that waggler's working because I thought it was but, too wide to right, chuck, mate. It is, but it's too wide to feed on most of the Glebe. Yeah. That's the key thing there. But you have to think of it in a different way. The, the reason the waggler's working so well at the Glebe is that for anyone that's ever been there, when you thought it was feeder dominated one, it's very yeah. much a feeder venue. Yeah. But when you fish that feeder at the Glebe, definitely in matches that I fish when it's yeah. high pressure. You throw it in, and the rule used to be, sink your line, wind it in again. That's when you get your bite. Second, two minute chuck you get your bite, yeah. it plops in, sits yeah. there. 90 seconds, we haven't had a bite, you wing it in and chuck it in. 99% of your bites come then. Yeah. 90% 90, 90 of your bites come then. The waggler is only emulating a feeder going in. Yeah? But it's where on. them fish think yeah. the feeders are landing. They hear the plop, they get a much nicer fall of bait because yeah. it's a waggler. It's slower. It's not, and you're getting bites as a result. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, massive. And it's not a... Chuck a waggler catch two hundred pound method. It's, it's not just like catches them, just catches some clever fish, unwary fish that are there coming in, catch Definitely. them, and then you just come off it here. Yeah, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's a special peg where you get lots of bites. Of yeah, course yeah, there yeah. is. But most bites, or definitely how I've had it last few matches, it's just worth <laughs> a chuck now and again. Yeah, go on, a bumbly bees. You nearly died then. Mate, they like, they were like that. It's like, like a bird. So yeah, it's about chucking that waggler to features. Yeah. Not necessarily feeding. You know, today's nice because I can feed as well. So if you've got a bit of both, if you've got a, a narrow enough. So if, if you, you had feed. the option, would you always feed? Yeah, or of course. You think it's just that that noise. Uh, now, as well? I mean, what we are now, we're on start of May. Um, uh, May, yeah. Start of May till flipping end of October potentially. Yes, right. Feed some bait, not necessarily a lot, but make something happen. Make and the that, plop. And obviously, like this time of year with carping, you'd have been proud of me the other week. Too. I went three hours without feeding because it was carp. You know what I mean? Because they haven't been feeding it, have they? They're just starting now. Just aren't starting. They? Not, right. Can we get a gun? They're doing me head in. They're so noisy, aren't they? <laughs> they just like talk. They know they're getting filmed, innit? That's talking, right. He's talking rubbish, he's talking, that's what they're saying. We took a waggler. What are you lying for? Mate, what are you yeah. that's what but anyway, right, waggler fishing. So, what do I want to do this? Yeah, I want to go kitty on them. Yeah, yeah. It's important, it's so isn't important, it? mate. It's like really important. It's really important. So, first up rods, I'm in a 12 foot rod gang. 100%. For everything. Yeah, yeah. I want a rod that I can cast accurate. The longer a rod, the more accurate I can be with it. Yeah. I don't feel that when you're punching big wagglers, which with this, or heavier wagglers that you are with this, I don't feel a little 10 foot or even 11 foot rods right. How do you feel in regards to, I don't think the the length of the rod, the line pickup makes a difference in this, in the, the fact that the fish is almost hooked. It's instant. Because you're tight in it, but obviously we're going to, ready to do it. Don't touch on that, I want to go into that. <laughs> tight, <laughs> tight line's very important, but yeah. yeah. I just 12, just feel right, yeah, don't yeah, yeah. For me, personal thing in it, but yeah, yeah you want to talk about it. I've always said 12. So, definitely. 12 footer, which is what I've got today. Go on, yeah. Jay, lad. No float or nothing on it today. 12 foot rod, bang on. Yeah. Yeah. Real whatever you want, 3,000 these sort of size, yeah. all good. Line is massive. Line is huge, yeah. Yeah, the diameter of your main line, obviously it has to have the strength as well, but the diameter of your main line, it, oh, it's everything. I think this is the only style of fishing where, I mean, normal main lines, it might last you a season, two seasons and that, but this, you've got to change it pretty regularly, haven't you? Because it's so light, you're yeah. having to fish lighter. Yeah. Do you mean, I was in the four pound gang. I did like using four pound, which in ours is 
Point 18, point 16. Point 16. Fairly yeah. light. It didn't, it's the problem with it is, it's all right in the winter when you're catching three or four fish. Yeah, yeah. When you're catching multiples and they're starting to pull now as well. Yeah. The, the being, especially the glebe, they're horrible. 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 Really angry. And you, you direct on your clip, so you, you, you tighten down quite a bit. I've, had to, I've gone six pound me. Six right. pound, a little bit heavier, it just does the job. And it's not affecting like the casting form or anything like just that? Just keeps it nice. What are you going to say diameters wise then? No thicker than point 20 or a bit lighter? Even point that's 18. pushing it. I want below below 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a main line, for a yeah. real line, innit? Yeah. For this, because it's just... Especially the size of the wagglers that we're going to come on to, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it just casts so much nicer, yeah. doesn't it? Which is huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. Yeah. So, set up, dead simple. Yeah, I set this up exactly the same as I'd set me pellet wagglers up. So, twisty, twisty, going off twisty. Going off topic a bit here, folks. Coming back to line then, Jay, are you... Uh, traditional main line, or would you go like high tech hook no, length for kind of thing? Not durable enough. It's right in the hook for, for your main line, you're on about. Yeah, for the main line. Oh, for the main line, I want normal, robust. We'll use oh, right, our horizon okay. mono. Right, right. I okay. want. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Proper real line, no high tech stuff on this. Right. I, I might use that in the winter for delicate. You can get away with finer stuff, can't you? You can this get away with heavy. lighter, but yeah. you need the robustness, you need the durability of your rig right, like to that. get the job done. Yeah. yeah. Which is what we got. So that's what I've got six pound line all the way through. Yeah. Straight onto my attachment. Yeah, really, really simple. I've got a snap that link. It is like as simple as it gets. It mate. doesn't get easy in that. No. Yeah, I've got a snap link in between two float stops. And you, have we done? We haven't done this for everyone, have we? No. We did this for members only the first time, but different waggler, pellet waggler fishing that was. Really simple. I have that with my snap link in the middle. It has to be for me. I need to change my float. Go on, the Guzons. That was, wasn't it? He was a bigger Yeah, name. good word. I need the option right, to change yeah, my float. Yeah, because condition, like, it was flat cam, I've got a wind off our back, and now it's gone a bit pungy. And yeah, like, lots light. of yeah. things make that float have to be changed. So having yeah. a fixed float in lots of different ways that we've done it in the past, yeah. for this ain't right. I mean, I want a thingy. I want a float I can change. So, hence the snap link in between two beads. And I have just two beads because they don't move because it always stays on top of this knot. Yeah. That's me loop right underneath it. You're massive for this now, aren't you? You've got longer up lengths. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny up lengths, massive. When we hook lengths are on my spool, yeah. they're like six foot long. Yeah, let's have a look, Jay. Big, long, massive hook lengths. Cheers, Don't. Mate. Yeah, I knew you were going to do that then. <laughs> no, they um, are proper. Look big, how neat they are as well, Jay. Oh, you make me sick, man. You look like that. But the hook length dictates the depth. Yeah. Yeah? So I have the hook length set to whatever depth I want to fish. So you can see my hook length starts there, keeps twisting. Hook length starts there, right underneath my knot. So that yeah. can't move, it can't go down. It's fixed where it is, and then I've got my hook length. In this case, we've got two and a half foot, just under three foot um, of 019. Yeah. You know I mean? Nice and heavy. I've damaged it. It needs to be changed. Oh, j line now. I'll be all right. I've you caught a few fishies. We're actually going to leave that for today, yeah, yeah because it doesn't matter. But I would have changed that. Yeah. But that's because I've had a little sneaky go. So, yeah, all good. Hook, depends what pellet you're putting on. 16 if you're putting a 6 on. 80, uh, 14 if you're putting an 8 on. Yeah, or whatever yeah. hook you want. Personal but, preference, isn't it, that? Yeah. Definitely. It's just got to look right for your pellet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hasn't it? But go heavy. Do you know what I mean? Everything's, I've got an MTX3 on there. But it's, it's a heavy gauge wire. So is that, is that it what it takes it for you then, Jay? Obviously, the further it is, the, the bigger pellets you're going to use. Obviously, well, I, like I, to be, yeah? I, I use a six. Or, oh, yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, distance dictates my pellets. So I've used sleeve weights, what, you've got to go to eights. Got to. There's like sixes. And size of fish and everything, isn't it? Size of fish and distance dictates. I would rather feed sixes, though, because I can feed more. I can yeah. make more noise. I can feed ten sixes, whereas eights fill them up a bit quicker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, nine times out of ten, it's eight because of distance. That's right. what it is today. Yeah. Today and wind as well. Wind, yeah. wind and waggler fishing are the two biggest enemies on, in the world. They? Unless it's on your back, they don't get on. Yeah. But it, it <laughs> dictates so much wind, doesn't it? Yeah. In what wagglers you use, what rods you use, what bait you've got to feed. It's massive. I suppose the beauty of this, even though we have got a, like a, a side wind potentially. Um, yeah, not too bad. It's not in yeah. there long enough, is it? The rig's not in there long enough to to make a difference. Would you say? It depends. Sometimes you want to be waiting a little bit longer, yeah, do you? Leave that, but yeah, we'll talk about that when the rig's in so you can see what's happening. I'm jumping for... Yeah. I but no, you, you're with folks. it, you're with it, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. So, next up, wagglers. You want a wagglers? Yeah, two types I'm into. Yeah, boy! Definitely two types, what do we need to... We only need one, yeah. in fact, we only need one of each for now. Go on, mate. We only need one of each. I've got our Matrix ones, which are heavy. They're actually a weird plasticky type material, but they're my heavy waggler. Yeah, so... If I need to keep a tight line yeah. and my bites aren't instant because they sink a little bit quicker. Yeah, it depends when bites are coming and the weight of waggler I need to keep my line tight, get to where I'm going accurate, keep everything as accurate as possibly can. I may need one of these and a bit of wind. Right. Yeah, I'd rather, nine times out of ten, use a foam waggler for this sort of type of fishing. 100%, yeah, Because yeah. it needs to be beyond instant. Yeah. 
that waggler, the, the top of your waggler needs to pretty much not get wet. Yeah. It, do you know what I mean? It's that fast it's in, you're fishing it, it's, that it's quick. It's mad. Like, I've commented on it loads of times. Oh, like, your, your pellet goes in first and you float behind it. It just it it's looks, how it has to be perfect, amazing. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because if it isn't, if, if your waggler goes in a little bit deeper, yeah. it interrupts that hook length going in. It's coming back a bit. And pulls it. Line, just, it? Yeah, it just twitches your hook. Yeah. You don't want that. So most of the time, a foam, do you know what I mean? These are some samples that we might have coming soon. Um, some firm ones are me, they're the ones I go for first. Nice. Good yeah, with that. whatever attachment you want to use. There's loads out there, isn't it? So, yeah. Yeah, 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 lots of different ones. But all my floats you can see, I mean, I've got some of Peddy's attachments, I've got 10 different types of attachments to use, or I've got ready loaded ones. Yeah. But all my floats, whatever they are, allow me to interchange. All the time, all the waggler things we've done, we're never ever fans of putting big, horrible shot rounds. That doesn't exist these days. No, can't do it. No, we've done a few different things in the past, but no, I just want one I can swap. You change all the time, don't you, folks? But, but this you, is you find you something know, better. Yeah, definitely. You find something better that's going definitely. on. So, lots of wagglers there. Yeah. Next, I want to go into clipping up. The this important bit, this, and I need yeah, to put yeah. some goggles on to it. So, I've got my all different choices of wagglers there, depending on what the wind's doing, what the fish are doing. Yeah. Yeah, so first, what I'm going to do is clip up with a fairly heavy one. So, I'm going to put... I'm going to put one of them on. And I'm going to go even heavier again. Go on, Jay, lad. So, I go really heavy. I'm going to go, like, me proper heaviest. I haven't actually had a chuck of this today. I've got a weed! There's something munching in here. Is there? You can hear something like nibbling a little mouse. Yeah, I can hear something nibbling. So I'm going to clip my waggler on. I've got my hook length on. Yeah, I wouldn't obviously do that. I'd do this without my hook length on. Can I take that off? Just in case you go bye bye. Yeah, no, I can't take it off. Well, it's staying on. But assume my hook length isn't on. Yes. So that's my first step is to get my waggler. It's a big float on to start with, me big, heavy float on. Because it's just easier doing it a bit. Yeah, definitely. It's just like yeah. getting the dishes with a ledger bump. And what I want to do it? is sneak up to it. Obviously, I'm, I'm already clipped off, but we're going to assume I'm not. I'm just going to wait for these ducks to go. Because I'm like, no, in fact, we're going to go for it. Just go for it, Jay, lads. No, it's never look, stopped me before, mate. Come I on. would. I'd normally just go for it, but I best not catch a duck. But yeah, what I'm looking to do is not go, not try and be a big man, get it right straight away. I want to drop it a little bit short to start yeah. with. So I'm going to drop it like there to start with. Yeah. That were nice, oh, but nowhere near close enough. Yeah, but I've got no, well, I have got a hook length on, but I wouldn't have a hook length on when I'm doing it. And literally all I'd do now is just peel what I reckon that's short, so I'd peel three foot, six foot, I reckon I'm six foot short, and then I'd clip up. Yeah, and I'd clip up, bang on, where I think it's going to be. Chuck it again, again, with no hook length on. Throw the ducks. Yeah, chuck in with no hook length on again, and just check where it is. So obviously I know I have got a hook length on, but I wouldn't. So next, now that I'm clipped up, I go all the way, let it hit, lovely, it's nice. Yeah, and as long as I'm putting my rod in the right place, but we'll talk about all that in a bit, it's gonna land relatively in the same place. But what I don't wanna do, I don't wanna chuck it in the grass, because I've gotta remember I'm gonna have a hook length on of whatever distance that needs to turn over. That needs to flick over, land in as close as it possibly can to the, to the grass, because that is what's gonna get me a bite. It's all about that feathering, in it? So, so more than happy, float. yeah, I can chuck that in, all nice, bump. Yeah, it's, it's going to land nice. That wasn't nice, but it is. I'm happy with how it is. Yeah. What I'm going to do now is swap my float. Go on, Jay, lad. Because that one, at the minute, with no wind... It's like you're right. not even putting any force into it at all, no, are no, you? It's just too, literally... It's too big and it yeah. dives too much. Yeah, a li only a fraction, but it dives too much for the situation. So I'm going to swap to well, a foamy. situations, though, where they do come to a bigger noise, don't they? Because obviously, it's like you say, the glee, they're getting used to that big Definitely. heavy noise going in. But it's not the noise that I'm interested in at the minute. It's... Um, how far my float sinks. Yeah. So with a foam one, so I'll swap now to a, a five gram foamy one. And when I chuck that, it's fishy. I need to keep away. I'm not going there, am I? I'm going to the right a bit. I've been chucking there, but let me chuck that again. It's gone to the wrong marker, folks, isn't he? Um, where am I going? I'm going to that. So I'm chucking him in. Nice foam one. I know it's getting there plenty, and it's, it's still keeping my line tight. I want my line to be tight on the water. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as I start getting a big bow, it's no good. No. Yeah, it's going to move me float. As soon as that float moves, it's a mess. Yeah, but I've only got a window, like you said, potentially of five to 20 seconds anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm recast. Maybe a bit more, maybe 30 seconds today. Right. Yeah, and what we've started with today, knowing the venue's different, because I know how deep it is over there. I know it's two foot-ish, innit? Yeah. We ain't far off, so I've gone yeah. a bit more. I've gone two and a half foot, like I say. Yeah. Because it's going to give me, once that float goes in, that's going to land tight. It gives me a lovely, nice fall. But I'm also going to get bites on the deck. Yeah. 
So depending on what moved it in. It's worth mentioning that, isn't it? Obviously, it's a method that will catch your fish. Certainly, we're looking to catch them through the water on that plop as the noise. But yeah, a bit of both. what it's like over there and while we're feeding, you are going to catch on the bottom. Definitely. And you need a float that can fish both because we've done this before with an insert waggler fishing lovely on the bottom. Yeah. But the problem with an insert waggler is you don't catch on the settle. Diving and everything. Yeah. And diving too deep. It makes a long. mess. Definitely yeah. makes a mess. I'm going to feed a little bit of bait. Go on, the feed. I wouldn't. If I were at Glebe, I'd just crash it in. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go straight in, but today we've had a fish, so I, can, I know I can feed a bit of bait. Yeah. But yeah, at the Glebe, I just crash it in. And now what I want to talk about is where I put my rod. Talk about this as well, Jay, the casting, how much of a uh, drop you have from your rod tip to your float, because I think I a lot of anglers my bait. that My wrong, bait's probably around the bottom eye. Yeah, there, yeah. My bait's probably around right, my bottom right eye. That. So me, with a 12-foot rod, my float's halfway down my rod, it's right on the joint. We see it's, this a lot, that's don't comfy, we? You know, winding right up to your rod tip. Oh, mate, you, you need just, minimum five yeah. foot. Don't you? Maybe it's, six. It's this bit here what you're doing as well, the little All swings. Night. So we're waiting for them to go. But I've got a float on now that is plenty heavy enough to get there. Also keep me line tight and not dive. Very tight. They're the yeah. three things that I need in it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really happy at the minute. But what I need to do is to feather it in nice, but I need to keep it very flat. So when I cast my float, I'm not casting it up in the air and yeah. a big bow. Because if, if I do that, if I chuck it like this, if I chuck it high yeah. and let it come in, Plop. yeah. I've, I've just done my spanner cast, but yeah. my bow now, see my bow's all the way around there? Yeah, man. No good, instantly. I need to cast very flat. And I think if you're hitting the clip, obviously, again, too high. It doesn't turn it over. Yeah, your pellet's coming down with your float. Yeah, it? just makes it a mess. So what it's all about is casting. Like, as I'm looking at it, my float will barely go above the island. Yeah, man. So I'm keeping it very flat, and then it'll hit the clip really nicely, and in turn, that tears my bait over the top of my float, because I've got to put my bait into the island. Yeah. There, your bait has to land in the rushes yeah do you know what i mean and pretty much in Squirrels. the rushes <laughs> yeah but it is if you don't catch him you're not cast if you don't it's catch right, him now and again so right, mate, you're not yeah. close enough are you no so casting nice and low you see it yeah. turns over and my bait lands past it Perfect. yeah it's nice i mean i want to get a bit closer so i'm going to chuck it properly let me pay attention to what i'm doing now Go on, but my rod my rod isn't in front of me my rod's down here when i'm in the clip yeah because i need that cushion yeah I don't want to strike and it's be directly to get on used my clip. To, isn't it, mate? You know what I mean? Really hard to get used to. Obviously, it's different with a method or a feeder or a bomb, something heavier. Why isn't that going quite... Have you re me or something? No, no, no. It's a different wind now, isn't it? It has. It's changed a bit. That wind's um, just catching it. Yeah, me. method, feeder, anything like that, hybrid, it's very, very heavy, very tight, so it's keeping your line tight. Yeah. Whereas on a waggly, you've got to get used to hitting that clip. If the waggle too hard, definitely struggles, doesn't it? It's going that to be wind, bouncing back The wind's just the changed a bit, hasn't it? It's a little breeze towards me. That one's yeah, better. Boy. That's how we want it. See how the float's gone in, but the bait's flicked past it, and I've still got a relatively tight line. Yeah. yeah You're so almost I'm... anticipating where it's going to hit the clip with that rod, aren't you? Exactly that, but with a cushion. So I can yeah. still, like with my finger now, I'll just tap my spool so my line isn't directly on my clip. Yeah. But it's not moving my float or anything. I've no. still got enough slack to move that. Yeah. And that's pretty much my cast done. Yeah? And it's all dependent on obviously conditions it like we've got depends in Depends what's leaving. going on, yeah. Every cast is different because of this wind. Yeah. As soon as this wind starts catching my line, it's a mess. Yeah. Yeah, but what I have got, if you notice it, when it first goes in, that's when I'm optim my optimum time to get a bite is when it's first gone in. Yeah. Yeah. So my waggler's gone in. Dump, let me hold him. Waggler's gone in. This is the first time I'm getting a bite. Yeah. yeah as it's sinking. But what'll happen then, it'll all end up in a bit of a heap. But then the waggle will slowly drift and it tightens up to your bait. Mm. Yeah, because I'm still fishing it on the bottom in this case. Yeah. And it's happening quite quick. You'll see that it moves and then it just slows down a little bit. Yeah, just when it's going bottom. That's when it's tightening up and it gives me an option to get some bites on the deck. So I'm getting the best of both. You know what you're going to catch there then, Jay, don't you? What? Carp on the arc. Carp on the arc. So that's going in nice. Every go. Oh, yeah, every go. Oh, that's like that after, isn't it? Gee, that's <laughs> me talking and not paying attention. But that's when your bites are coming. Yeah, that would have been the only F1 in the lake, probably. And the importance of that bait hitting the flipping weeds, everything. That is where the big lads are sat, aren't they? Yeah, Mum. Because obviously a lot of these fisheries, they're so undercut, they're just hiding under there. They know, don't they? They yeah. know to live right under them little... Rooty you know where it's going in nice now. It's a bit silly, like Packington on that big lake. Uh, oh yeah, it'd be good on there. Wouldn't it? But right, I'm, pay attention to this cast now. I've not had a bite when it first went in. Yeah. So you'll see, hopefully, with a big doofer, an arc's uh, bows forming in my line. Yeah. But my waggler's like moved slightly to the right, and, and then, then it's tightening the... up. Yeah. See, like it's stopped. It's not pulling through because I'm on the bottom. Yeah. Do you mean it's not like pellet waggler fishing in open water where you're off the bottom and your float moves quick? Yeah. 
this will hold for a bit. Like, see how it's, it's holding enough now yeah. for me to think I might get a bite. But then as soon as it goes yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit faster, yeah, it. then I'll naff it off. Yeah. Do you mean I'm close to moving it in now? But I've had 15 second cast, nearly yeah. 20 second cast. Oof. See an odd little. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so that's boy. on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, on the bottom, lovely. So yeah. I'm getting two options out of it. Yeah, mum. Which is massive. And it's exactly the same. I'd say at places like the Glebe, you'd be amazed how shallow it is over there. Such an effective way of fishing, isn't it? It's just you're getting best of both in it, and you've not got yeah. to mess about throwing a bomb over no. the top. As long as the wind lets you do it, that is the key thing. The yeah. wind is everything. Never, isn't it? honestly, never ever sink your line. Literally, you've seen it. As long as your line's straight, leave it floating. Yeah, if, you, if you sink your line, you've moved your float. Yeah, you can't do it. You, everything is about your float first going in. Yeah. When it first going in, that is everything. There is he, Andrew. Is he nearly here? They're pulling today. They're pulling here as early. Pulled like mad this week. And it's mad like, all. They just woke up. They're quick, isn't it? They have, haven't it? A few it? weeks ago, they're like, oh, they net just net. come in. Now they're like. No! Angry! Uh. Proper method, I absolutely adore it, mate. It's different, isn't it? it's busy, yeah. that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah. But say so it's nice today, I find it's different when you can feed. When you can feed and you can control something, your bites are a lot more consistent and a lot steadier. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you make, yeah. You're keeping fish in your peg, you're keeping them interested. If you can't feed because of distance, that's all that dictates distance you only and get wind. A few. And then you've got you to come off it. That yeah, time, you seem yeah. to have to rest it. You seem to be able to have five to ten casts where you're likely to get one or two or three bites. Yeah. And then thrashing the same spot without any bait, just a float going in, seems to upset them and they don't settle in the area. That's a nice popular, mate. He's a proper one, isn't he? You want a popular? Proper one. Let's see, I can't pull the heads off. I've only got that. Oh, I'm really, really, Did you get your really hurt. It hurts so much, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you on, Jay, lad. Take the pain. Take it, Jamie. Yeah. Come on. So when you net, when you net it, Jay, I want you to go through where you position your rod and everything for nice unhooking. Oh, I like and, that. I'll take yeah. the technical of you. We'll do that. I'd just flung it back in. I've got a sore little finger now. Have you? Yeah, come and land this one for me. Do you want me to be gilly? Just no, you've got to give me a go. You've got to give me a go. I'm bored. Of... No, you you might go yet. You're going to lose me waggler, so no. You know I'm going to scribble in this joke. <laughs> oh, mate, that's beautiful. Right, what are you doing now? What are you doing now? Under my arse. Yeah. yeah Everything's rod. tight. Out the so way. Him, how important is this? Because obviously dead light, light rods. Yeah. If you have, let have your back go wind slack, engaged. Tangling, isn't it? And then clip it when you think it's right. Perfect. Yeah, fishing between my legs. Yeah, love it. All lovely, all beautiful, all unhooked as easy as it can possibly be. Good to go. Keep that nice and tight. Yeah, get oh, rid of it. Go. Done, yeah. aren't you? He's going oh, in that's me, sneaky, that. He's going in my fourth net. Yeah, can't, you get a bite there quite often. Yeah, mate, I like that. <laughs> Love it, Jay, lad. We like it, that. Yeah, so, such a good method. But that was on the bottom. But then what, the one before it was like literally within sort of four seconds, wasn't it? Yeah, because I'm getting best of both. Yeah, and so really? my feed hasn't got to be stupidly accurate. Because I'm not think feeding you're going loads to of bait. Accurate on this, do you? No, four or five pellets, I mean, twice. Yeah. And you just paint, they've just got to be in the area. I think the plop is more important than the actual amount of bait. Yeah, definitely how it so lands. Just keeping it going in. See, what I'm going to have to pay attention to now, though, is the wind. See how the wind's proper got up? Yeah, man. Although it's not got up, but it has sort of thing, it's going to move me line. Yeah. So I'm going to have one quick cast on this. And it wouldn't be surprising if I've got to swap my float now. Oh, mate, that's beautiful. I nearly caught a goose then. Yeah. We'll see how long I get. Oh, not oh, long at all. Jay, yeah, well, I've, I've missed that because I've got a bit of bow in my line. What are you lying for? Just but missed it, you were slow. What are you lying for? <laughs> it's because no. I've got a bow in the line, 100%, isn't it? 100%, yeah. Because Absolutely. that wind's popped off. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought I was going to catch a goose then. I know. You might have just shaved your line there, but Jay. Like. I'd wind that in because yeah. my cast were different. My float landed and me... You cut it behind it. Just messy, but the wind's catching it now. Yeah. So I'm going to do one more cast just to show you how bad it is. And this is so why is this I when need... you put like a potentially heavier float on there. Yeah, too? you've got to. There's no other way of doing it, innit? I'm getting one second of flipping fishing. Yeah, it's in. Yeah. Watch how quick it's moving. See, instantly it's pulling across me, yeah. me feed, like fast as well. Yeah. Too fast to get a bite. And it's the fact that your line's all the way over there. And my lines, yeah. That's getting more and more of a bow all the time. Yeah. I thought it was caught on something then. Is it off? Is it moving? Yeah, it's moving. Right? It's moving now, isn't it? Just check. Well, so that pellet's like anchoring quite quite nice. Oh, there's a lot on the bottom, isn't there? Some fish over there, aren't they? I always tell everyone, folks, you never catch on the waggle on here. 
But again, another one I've missed because of my tight line. Yeah. Should we get it wrong once more? Do it wrong again and put heavy float on. Then put heavy float on and fix it. It's 100% it's that, that arc, that cave, that, that cave yeah. in your line. My just... float is making me miss bites. Yeah. You're not tight enough to it. Yeah. Here. I feel like I was going to catch you then. I had to like, I don't know what happened then. Mate, don't you worry about me. I don't even know what happened then. I'm ducking out of the way and everything, me. Right, we ready? Yeah, boy. See, I mean, I'm struggling to, yeah. to even get it there. Yeah. Give it this cast and that float's coming off. Anything happening? Anything happening? No. So I'm going to feed quick, whiz in, change float, whack it out there. Oosh. And get a bite. Oh. Again, I missed it because. Gujons, MJ, lad. No, they're, they're all bites. It's no, just I missed them because of my cave. There's a swell. Right, watch this. Big float, fish on. So I'm going to put my biggest float on now. So just it's not to... necessarily going to land as pretty, is it? No. It's is nice, but. Of course not. For its job, and we are getting fish on the bottom, for its purpose, yeah. you know what I mean? But that's swapping to, what's that, a 10 or an 8? An 8 gram. Go on. And my plastic site wagglers. On so the way. finesse wagglers. Oh, aye. I mean, it just doesn't go in quite as nice, but more well, than happy. stable it is, though. It just stays a bit. Do you know what I mean? All of a sudden, it's fishing for five seconds longer, isn't it? Look, it's just sitting there. And the wind's still here. Exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But it's because I've been able to hit my line with a fractionally tighter, hit my clip with a fraction, and create a fractionally tighter line. Yeah. And because of that, it stays for 10 seconds more, doesn't it? Mm. That's proper stable, that, and it's only moved like what? Oh! It moved about a couple of inches, that's yeah, it. Yeah, hardly anything. Stayed nice. The only thing I didn't like then was my bait landed to the right of my float. So it sort of didn't tighten up as good. So I'd have probably wound that in if we weren't filming. What are you lying for? No, I know. <laughs> Isn't it? I'd have left it. So over that side uh, a little bit. Uh, that's it. See, a little bit too far off that, because I've had to twitch it, because something happened. Yeah. A little bit too far off, but I'll still give it 10 seconds. Maybe I might feed as well. I mean, on your bad casts, yes, don't leave them and wait, but use them to do something else, yeah, innit? But even that, it's not bad. Because you know, I'm catching on bottom. Ooh. Bloody hell, there's light. Little dinky do. See how now that's pulling? Yeah. Yeah, as soon as it starts pulling, crank it in, waste of time. Back in. As soon as I get this one right, this will go. Yeah, yeah, that'll go. You see, it's landed right as well, so it's going to tighten up quick. Yeah. My fingers can't see it with that white bloody fellow can now. Yeah, you know that you cast that you'll get bites off. It's mad. Like if I had a cast like that's that with right. my phone waggler. Yeah, that'd have gone. And it held, it'd have gone straight away. Yeah. Oh, very, very lightly it would have gone. Oh, the wind's just got up for this one. I fancied that cast as well. It just tightens up. To, see how it stopped then? Yeah. So that's when it's reached the end of the, it's pulling on the pellet now. And now my pellet's flying through my pipe. And I say, if it moves too much, you want to bring it in because you'll foul up one. And I don't want to do that because no. it'll just trash my peg. I'll probably lose it. You just don't want to do it, innit? So it's, it's worth mentioning that, yeah. Obviously, the shallow water that you're chucking into, you can potentially foul up lots of Yeah, you your, your rig's moving time, about, yeah. innit? It's going to whack yeah. them, but do what you can to prevent it. I mean, we all want to catch fish, and yet we land an odd foul up, but I don't want to because. They're a pain in the ass and they cause problems. Go on, scuttles. Yeah, I'll get in the way because it's nice Tina Turner grass today. Yeah, you get away with it. Just you can get away with it, it, but it's how <laughs> it needs to be like that, or I'm not close enough. Yeah, yeah. oh mate, hundred percent. There's none of this. To. Oh, you're getting caught in the far bank. No. I want to because it means I'm doing you're it right. Expecting to go for a few uplands, aren't you? Of course, yeah. Definitely. I'm saying hook length being, I've got 018 on. Yeah. So it's you're not doing it. A right. bit lighter than me waggler, than me main line. Oh, J lad. That's so because it's a bit, oh, because it's a bit lighter than me main line. I'll get away with it. How many fish are there every time? A lot of fish there, isn't he? But right good, isn't it? Yeah. Thinking about, it's not just a case of cranking that float in. No. You've got to think about what it's doing. It's a big like this, Andrew. You're a bit angry. A little bit angry. Yeah, there's some whoppers in. There's some big lads, isn't it? But yes, no, going it's... lovely. And you can see, uh, it, you it's don't a... even mind a wind like this, it's coming. Uh, Coming in our face now, folks, and like you don't mind that, do you? Either off your back or in your face, and it's bad. The only trouble you'll have potentially feeding in it at distances. Yeah. So but it, when is it, comes it to never, the north, I don't think I've ever had a day with life on a waggler where it stays beautiful all day. No, These little happen. breezes just pop up. Yeah. But if you ain't got the floats to swap about with, 
then you're knackered. Yeah. You know, if you're just if you've got a fixed float or not all the floats set up or whatever else, all of a sudden you can't fish efficiently for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to be able to think about what your bait's doing and what your float's doing in relation to or what your float's causing your bait to do on the bottom. Yeah. I think the other advantage that this style of waggler fishing has uh, over other methods is the fact that the, the fish have seen the method, seen the hybrid all before. They've not oh, necessarily man. seen this that often, have they? No. You know what I mean? They know uh, to feed. That, pellet waggler for most anglers is like open water, feed some bait, cast into it, innit? Well, people shy off it as well because it is so technical and you do lose kit. You do look a bit of a wally losing kit. Is it raining? But deal with it. Mm. Oh, it's raining. Bloody raining. It's bidding. It's bidding. I don't think this is in the mouth, but I think it is. It's close. I mean, the bite should have been in the mouth, but yeah, it just probably just, wasn't. It's wrapped around its fin. Yeah, it's not, but hey, we'll pretend. Yeah, wrapped around its fin. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, don't shy away from it, folks, because it's so... It's deadly. On, on the day, it's just, like, ridiculously yeah. good. So effective. You've just got to put up with the problems, bring the changes with your floats. So what I'd also have as well, me, is a couple of different depths set up. So I'd have two rods set up. Right, OK. I'd have one pretty much on the bottom, like I've got now, two and a half foot. Yeah. Three foot. Yeah. Because it works in two ways. Sometimes they're really shallow, obviously. So you might fish flipping 12 inches deep. Yeah. And all your bites might come on the splash really shallow, really quick. Um, other days, they'll really, really shy away from the noise of the waggler. Yeah. So even though it's only three foot deep, some days I might fish four or five foot just to keep my bait away from my waggler. Right, get, yeah. Makes yeah, a huge yeah. difference. When they're really, really oh, moody. To like, take a, a couple of winds off, clip it up there so you like your bait's going and put your floats away. Yeah, yeah like just that. so it's passed. Yeah. So it's gone nice now. I'm going to swap to my other waggler. I'm going to nail one more because it's going to rain in a minute. Rain. Because I do want that light waggler. I'm always trying to revert back to my lightest waggler because it yeah. just goes, it gives me more options of on the drop and as well when it's at the uh, on the bottom. Yeah. Whereas my heavy ones, I know that bite was them, but I don't fancy getting as many bites on the settle on me on the big waggler. It just goes in. Shave nice, the grass. That's going straight away, isn't it? You just know it. Yeah. Shave that grass. Saying it's not going to be bang on accurate. I've probably got a metre and a half there of bit that I'm I chucking think it's in. better it's not, Jay. Obviously, your feed's never going to be like tight at that distance, yeah. is it? So. Like it gives you options to cast as well. Oh. I mean, it gives me a couple of yeah, areas yeah. to chuck. I've got that one bowed off then. Yeah. But so not a lot. I've got a metre. I'm not chucking to that green bit on my left. Yeah, well, I'd That's be happy me. with the island, Jay, lads. You're not a metre. You're not me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It's just keeping it nice, isn't it? Yeah. I'm saying that feed as well. I'm trying to put it on the island. Yeah. Yeah, it can't get close enough. Oh, Jamie, that's going. It goes beautiful, doesn't it? That's how I want oh. it. Clip, clip the things. It's all good. Goes in. Happy. It's when you see that grass flicking, you just know it's just like... Yeah, it's feathered it in for you. Sneaked in, didn't you? Oh, he's ball waved off it. But he's just done me him. Yeah. Something's gone on there. But I never had a bite, never had an indication, no, no, but no. something, he wasn't happy. Matt, it's one of them, you might... Not some grass underneath it, something like that, isn't it? Yeah, his mate was there. Did you turn it? One, one more. One more. It's simply the best. Better than all the rest. Oh. Better than any man. Don't like that. Man ever seen. See, the little breeze gets up again. I'll yeah, be back man. in now, change my float again. Fiddly and a pain, but this is why I'd like to power it takes the mick at this type of fishing because it's the busiest angler that's never settling for that'll do. No, he's always on that. It's right. got to be right. Yeah. It's how we need it to be. One more. It's just that, it's mad, isn't it? That fraction of a breeze and we last two casts just have all been a foot right short. Right. Yeah. It's no good. I mean, utterly no good. I'm hating them as soon as they're in. Because them fish want to be in that cover and they want to be happy, don't they? Yeah. So you and your match wouldn't even put up with them, would you? No, you just crank it back. You know, as I said, I might feed. Nope, not happening. Even if it lands bad like that. Yeah. So when it lands sideways, yeah. not happening. So just, that wind just causes them odd little dodgy cast. So that one's gone nice. Yeah, oh. so much better. Perfect in fishing. Come on. I'll have a fish on in 30 seconds. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Do a little check of the glass whip. Oh, I'm not even fishing, so I'm not going to catch one on that cast. <laughs> Get off. 
I've got to wait. Good old. Hope useful that as well. But you won't try to have that. It's like, where is it? It's like that. Where is it? Ah, it'd, yeah, it's still float land. Still up in the air. But you've got to chuck like it, yeah, ain't you? Got to. Oh, seen your pellet land then. It'll land next right. to it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not me at all. So frustrated, aren't they? But it's busy, isn't it? It's its own is. I love it. I'm not looking at catching a million fish. You've seen the size of them. Yeah, if I yeah, can boy. catch flipping. Give that little get off. Oh, that's it. Tina turn it's off, he's yeah, off. Yeah, but too far away. Oh, I would have got I would have left that day, lad. I need to go. I won't lie. I keep chucking at the tuft, I need to chuck to the right a little bit. I would have definitely left that. <laughs> yeah, that was staying. Oh mate, that little uh, that's too fast. That little flick off the grass. Definitely. <laughs> With your method feeder, that always works, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Your method goes on the mud and you flick it off, you always get one. <laughs> yeah, boy. Come on! It's a win. That wind. Would you have left that then? Oh, no. mate, I'd have left every single one. I'd still be like fishing in the reeds, like not knowing that it's not, not even in the water. I'm like, rubbish. Don't worry, why did not work it here? That's going, isn't it? That one I'll go. 100 percent that's going. I didn't feel I needed to change my float then though, because the wind was all right, but and it was just catching me on something. Just moved sideways a bit then, didn't it? Yeah. Love it, Jay. What's he liking it? We knew, we knew when it was gonna go. Method then be kicking in and you're gonna have oh, a go. Oh Jay, no, because I'll lose your float, mate. <laughs> I haven't fished this way for a long, long time, folks, so no. I really want to go, but I don't want to lose his float. <laughs> but uh, another thing I'm gonna say as well, that go on. always for me happens hundred percent of the time. Yeah. Is that my rig never lasts all day. Because of how delicate it is and how much of abuse you're giving it. What do you mean, like hook lens or everything? Everything. I'll often have to reset up. What main lines and that and? Yeah, just around my float, around my float area. All oh, right, yeah. Where it's I'll still often have to reset up. Yeah, it takes yeah. a lot of kicking. Yeah, mum. Yeah. Hook lens do, don't they? Obviously, grating and all that and. Yeah, of course yeah. they do. I mean, you're pulling. You're not. It's brutal. Yeah. Big fish. Yeah. Out, so man. what I'll have is I'll have two rods set up. Yeah. But I'll. Do you know what I mean you could have three or four even? It yeah, is a man. method where things happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I nearly went in then. Another, another bumblebee trying to get you. No, but he boxed, nearly went in. Box going. Got a bit of a tip. So, I think that's a lovely point, yes. Andrew, to end that. Love it, Jamie. With another nice little five pounder. Got to get out there and give it a go, folks. It's one of the, I'd say, most exciting methods of fishing that we have, like, and commercial wise, isn't it? Yeah. Something um, different that they've not seen necessarily a lot. They've Something not, that... and that's why, that's why it's so good, it's so effective. Yeah, because obviously they've been battered. They expect to be caught over there on a method hybrid. They're so used to it, that noise going in. Whereas obviously when they just hear that pellet going in, which is so natural. Yeah, they think it's safe. Whoa, yeah, love it, mate. So, Here's a go. Well, we'll get, go. Off, get off go. the box, the Jamie. Box. Okay, come on. My go. Right, so we hope you are enjoying the video that you're watching. If not, have just watched. But what we'd also like you to see is the packages that we include for our more technical, informational stuff, where what we can bring to you is all we pretty much know about the technical side and our match style side of fishing. And I'm what not we in have, this bit. <laughs> you are, of course you are in this bit. We have two sides of things. We have the basic package that for $4.99, you can watch us fish live matches, a QA and a every month, and additional stuff from Matty Doors with live matches and more technical stuff on his side. Or we have the all access package where you can literally see technical insights, live matches from again from us, but also from some of the best anglers flipping on the planet. I mean, we treat it as three days coaching for us and we go out and we show you what we're learning for anglers like Darren Cox, Andy Bennett, their ship, to name Loads. but a few. Well worth a look if you fancy having a little bit more fishing content to watch.